Hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue, and tonight I want to set the record straight with these photos of hiking Megan, which I still had to address. You might remember that they were issued right after the coronation of King Charles, and as some people on the internet claim, they were issued to spark pregnancy rumors or something. I don't know, but I think she had other things in mind. First of all, the moment I saw these pictures, I noticed the posture. This one is perhaps the most shared of them, and there are a few details that we can spot. As usual, her favorite speed dial paparazzi is back red. And these paparazzis are so considerate, so attentive to detail, that they made sure to take the pictures at waist level so the Duchess of Sausages could appear taller. That's a photo trick that you can use, by the way. Then there's the posture. In most of those pictures, of which we can guess were batted by the methane herself, she appears with her hands on her hips and the elbows broad. That's a power posture, something that you, you do to become more visible, to call for attention, and to some extent to feel more powerful. There's even scientific evidence about this. So maybe Megan has been reading some body language books recently. Maybe she has read mine. And another trick is the oversized sunglasses. You might think that they help protect your face against the sun, as big as they are, but no, that's what sunblock is for. She's wearing oversized sunglasses because they make your face look younger and slimmer. It's another effect that many celebrities use, and it's no wonder that the Duchess wanted to make the most of her impromptu and absolutely not staged photo op to look her best, even if this in this strange hiking attire. And speaking of strange, no, I don't have any explanation for whatever was around her belly. It would be great if you helped me in the comments with suggestions about what this could be. My best guess is that she went full telemarketing, shopping, and got, got one of those belts that give you electric shocks to activate your muscles. Or perhaps that's the same electrical device she uses to control Huawei. Since he was in London, well, she could use it to do some fake crunches with those electroshocks. Uh, you know that Megan loves fake things, so fake crunches is not that much of a stretch for her. And speaking of Harry, I failed to mention in the past days that Dior claiming a bespoke suit for Harry at the coronation was a huge mistake. I mean, there are so many fabrics that prevent wrinkles. How does Harry manage to look like he brought the suit packed inside a bottle? And regarding the tailor part, I have no idea how these things are called, but it triggered my designer side when I noticed that the three creases going down his back were not aligned with the folds that went all the way down. That is something that keeps my eye twitching. But to be fair with Dior, I'm happy that they renewed Johnny Depp's deal with 20 million, marking the biggest men's fragrance pact ever. Good for him. Perhaps Dior has a thing with oppressed and gaslighted men. I see a pattern here, but it's not that Howie is innocent. And we got the full scorecard so far thanks to J.E. May. Correct. So let's tally. The tabloids made him act out as a bad boy, made his girlfriend break up with him, gave him depression and paranoia, caused his wife to contemplate unaliving herself, and yet he won't lead a private life out of the spotlight now that he has a chance to do so. Rather, he and his wife curt the press, smother the media with their PR, and set up pub encounters to get their pictures in the headlines. Because, you know, we need the monies. And I know we are long past the Chelsea David topic, but I couldn't help but notice this tweet by Ocean Girl. He's had so many beautiful women. Chelsea was my pick. And when you really take a look at this, it's like Harry had a type, right? You could certainly add the girl he lost his virginity to, to this group as well. Uh, I, I mean, how come the 180 turn in type? Uh, food for thought. And this reminds me of some blind gossip thanks to Megan Small. The first meeting at the super agency went unexpected. The staff were told to call the illiterate one by her title. 
no one was allowed to use her first name. And Megan's ball asks the necessary question. I wonder if Megan makes them curtsy to her. Won't be surprised. And thanks to Christine Queens, I found out that the king and queen are looking for a digital content producer. And not gonna lie, that grabbed my attention immediately. Uh, it's finding new ways to maintain the king and the queen's presence in the public eye and on the world stage. This is what makes a career at the royal household so different. Uh, interesting until I found out that the salary ban or brackets was between 34 and 35 thousands a year. I mean, I don't want to be rude, but I had to look at the job description just to confirm what are they looking for. I, I wanted to be sure. And yes, it says, joining our fast-paced and dynamic digital team, you'll deliver our digital output via our website, e coms and social media channels, predominantly through planning, filming, and editing videos. Uh, again, you're looking for a producer, someone who has experience planning, filming, and editing videos. I don't think that salary bracket is appropriate for someone who would be in charge of producing content of the king and the queen of the UK. And yes, maybe you could find a young emerging talent that could have all the energy to learn the ropes. But again, we are talking about content of the heads of the British monarchy. You require much more than an intern for that. Uh, just my two cents. And speaking of making videos for cheap, I found this tip that thanks to Genevieve on Twitter, Procter & Gamble ivory soap commercial sounds as though Megan was always precocious and still in the limelight. Remember Eugenie's wedding? I don't feel for Thomas, but he helped create who she is today by enabling and indulging her. I suspect Harry was raised in a similar way. And what is she talking about? Well, someone asks this question on Quora. Why hasn't Procter & Gamble ever verified Meghan Markle's claim that the letter she wrote to them when she was 12 years old about women doing dishes was the reason for them to change their commercial from women to everybody doing dishes? And there's a very interesting answer by Diane Timpson. Take a look at this. It is well known now that her father is responsible for the deception and she knows it. Being a child that demanded immediate self-gratification and never grew out of it, she complained to her father, Procter & Gamble didn't answer her letter out of the numerous ones her entire class wrote. Poor baby. So daddy contacted a friend that worked at Nickelodeon and together they worked on a spot featuring her as if she and she alone combated at the PG giant and won. And as if the 11-year-old David took down Goliath with the stroke of her mighty pen. Since this was a school assignment all the children in the class work on, I can't help but wonder how they felt being pushed into the background, quite literally, while Megan took center stage and made it all about her. Something still embedded in her well into the middle age, with daddy's helps, of course. I'm sure she practiced and studied her lines before the Nick cameras began rolling. Perhaps this is spurred on her pursuing an acting career. Procter & Gamble received thousands of letters about the ad, the majority of which, I'm sure, were more eloquently and persuasively written than an 11-year-old ever could. But her father, not wanting to see his little girl upset, forget about the rest of the class, concocted the scheme and together with his friend, came up with the narrative, the camera crew, lighting crew, which he probably did himself, and the audio crew she so proudly boosts uh, of to this day. Uh, all because her daddy was friends with someone working for Nick. Does anyone believe the cameras just appeared in the classroom without any preparation by all parties? Are we to believe Nick even knew of one letter being written in a schoolroom or out of the millions of school kids out there? If so, how? It was all daddy and all a sham, and one, she's still trying to cram down the public's throat to this day as her platform as an 11-year-old feminist activist who made a difference. Post scriptum, PG never answered her or her classmates' letters. Makes sense, right? What do you think? My wonderful 117,000 royal rogues, plus the half a million who haven't subscribed yet, 
I love you all. Remember to like this video and the two most important words, much love and bliss.